No, I mean, being crazy the hotel is, a, is the best yeah. competitive advantage there is. Explain. Because, you know, like whenever I, I, I work on a project that people respond to as like, that's crazy. I'm like, great. Well, then no one else will be crazy enough to try it. So I won't have any competitors. That's awesome. So, so listen, it, it may still be a bad idea, but like worst thing you want is to have a good idea that like 50 other people have at the same time. And that's a, that's a crowded space. I, I, I much prefer to stand alone. It's funny, in the academic research on this, so like people talk all about like what are the personality traits that make you a great entrepreneur? There's this funny finding they found when they look at just you know, the research on this. Um, there's personality traits that make you more likely to become an entrepreneur, and then there's personality traits that make you more likely to succeed as an entrepreneur. And they tend to be inversely correlated. What I mean is there's one that is something like, uh, and I can't remember the academics speak for it, but it's like ability to ignore inconvenient facts. <laughs> the academics speak for reality for disaster right, yeah, field. Yeah. So that is something that will make you more likely to become an entrepreneur, but actually becomes a liability once you are an entrepreneur. And I think that's, of course, why we see a lot of like startup co-founding pairs where you have kind of a more visionary type person and a more level-headed type person. Um, so I don't, you know, so I think a certain amount of kind of craziness is necessary. But people think of most entrepreneurs as risk takers. And you know, we talk about how that like all these crazy delusional people. But like the entrepreneurs when I meet them. Um, they're not looking to take risks. They're actually quite risk averse. They just see something that other people don't, and they're trying to find the highest probability way of making it happen. They're actually about eliminating risk. They're it, avoiding and just yeah, building into the product. Yeah, because if you really passionately believe, yeah. like if people forget that the part one of the Lean Startup the, of the book is called vision. Like a vision is still the primary and most important thing. If you believe in your vision truly passionately, then I think you've got to say, this is actually too important for the world to be left to a faith-based initiative. Right, like it, the world deserves to have this be tested and perhaps all the risks taken out. And, and many of the techniques that we talk about in improving the odds of startup success, they don't improve it from zero to 100%. You know, I was like, if you can get from zero to non-zero, that's pretty good. Or you know, whatever percentage you are now, if you can make it 1% higher, that's, that's a really big deal. So you know, there's no guarantees, but why not try to eliminate every possible risk? And the, the, the entrepreneurs I respect the most are, are very conscious about what risks am I taking and what risks can I avoid. Hey, everybody, I want to tell you about DigitalOcean, the best place for you to deploy your new application. It's super easy. It takes just 55 seconds to launch on an SSD drive in the cloud. Super fast, super easy. And um, hey, listen, uh, they've got 550 thousand developers using their product because it starts at just five dollars a month it's super easy to use and the api is super slick um what more can i tell you about it i mean you can go and have a pre-configured one-click image of node.js magento or docker or you can do your own custom uh infrastructure pick what you want obviously their clients include TaskRabbit, universe.com flywheel compose and us here at this week in startups and with hourly pricing you only pay for the resources you actually use and you're going to get one clean bill, go ahead and visit digitalocean.com slash twist, digitalocean.com slash twist for a $10 credit. And it's really full circle for us here at This Week in Startups because the CMO, Mitch, was a guest caller on This Week in Startups. And he asked me, Jason, what should I do with my career? And I said, join a high-growth startup. And he did, and he co-founded DigitalOcean. And now DigitalOcean has received tons of venture capital from people like Andreessen Horowitz, et cetera. And now they're a partner here on This Week in Startups, and we use their product. How full circle is that? The only thing that hasn't happened here is I haven't invested in the company yet. That's what's killing me. I'm reading this ad going, oh my God, I need to angel invest in this company. Anyway, listen, DigitalOcean is amazing. We use it. We love it. Any product that you hear me talk about, we only allow products uh, to do a live read like this if we actually use them and love them here at This Week in Startups and myself. So that's the case certainly with DigitalOcean. We love the product. Go ahead and visit digitalocean.com slash twist and get a $10 credit and thank DigitalOcean on your Twitter handle. They're at DigitalOcean. Go follow them. They love to hear from that. And when I see a super fan do that, I always go and give a fist bump and heart it and star it on Twitter. And I personally really appreciate it when you thank the sponsors because they love to hear that our fans are so loyal. Okay. Speaking of loyalty, let's get back to this amazing episode. <laughs> 